It is said that people are the most honest when they stand in the face of death. In the case of death row inmates facing the death penalty, many are said to plead their innocence until their very last breath, but many also decide to leave this world on a stranger note. Here's what some of them said. Carl Panzram was an American serial killer, rapist, arsonist, and burglar. In 1928, he was arrested for burglary and confessed to murdering two boys. While in prison, he confessed that he had killed over 22 people and sodomized over 1,000 males. Since he was considered psychotic, Panzram was sentenced to 25 years in prison. While serving his sentence, he killed a foreman in the laundry room for bothering him and was thus sentenced to death by hanging. Panzram's last words before his death were, Hurry it up, you Hoosier bastard. I could hang a dozen men while you're screwing around. Gary Gilmore was charged with three counts of armed robbery, two counts of assault, and two counts of murder in the 1970s. On January 17, 1977, at 8.07 a.m., Gilmore was executed by firing squad at the Utah State Prison in Draper, Utah. His famous last words were, let's do it. After his death, Gary became somewhat of a cultural icon. The police song, Bring on the Night, was inspired by Gary's possible thoughts on the night before his death. In his performance in the film, The Postman Always Rings Twice, Jack Nicholson was inspired by Gary. He was mentioned in Saturday Night Live, Seinfeld, and Roseanne. Perhaps most notably, famed advertising executive Dan Whedon credits Gary's parting words as the inspiration for Nike's tagline, Just Do It. James D. French was the last person to be executed under Oklahoma's death penalty laws in 1966 before the death penalty suspension. It was said that French wanted to commit suicide but was too afraid. Instead, he murdered his cellmate to compel the state to execute him. French was executed via electric chair Making light of the situation, his last words were, How's this for a headline? French fries. Richard Zeitvogel spent 22 of his 40 years in various Missouri prisons for offenses ranging from armed robbery to rape. These crimes earned him his initial prison sentence at the age of 18, which was then extended to life when he murdered an inmate. His death sentence, however, came as a result of killing a second prison inmate while still serving time for the first murder. Zeitvogel confessed to the second murder, hoping to be placed on death row with his friend and suspected lover, Frank J. Guinan. Guinan had acted as Zeitvogel's accomplice in the first of his two murders. Zeitvogel was placed on death row and was executed by lethal injection on December 11, 1996. His last words were, keep the faith and rock on. George Apple was sentenced to death by electric chair for the murder of a police officer in the 1920s. Apple's humorous take on his death made him famous for decades after his death. It is said that right before electrocution, Apple turned to the officers and said, Well, gentlemen, you are about to see a baked apple. Thomas J. Grasso was executed in 1995 for strangling an 85-year-old woman. Like other prisoners on death row, Grasso was granted a last meal. His request included two dozen steamed mussels and clams, a double cheeseburger from Burger King, half dozen barbecue ribs, two strawberry milkshakes, half a pumpkin pie with whipped cream, diced strawberries, and a can of SpaghettiOs served at room temperature. Because his list was so lengthy, the kitchen staff made a mistake and replaced one of his key items. Dissatisfied with his last meal, Grasso's last words were, I did not get my SpaghettiOs. I got spaghetti. I want the press to know this. Jimmy Glass was a murderer who was sentenced to death by electric chair in the state of Louisiana. Glass made headlines after his sentencing as he became a petitioner in his Supreme Court case, Glass v. Louisiana. He claimed that electrocution violated the 8th and 14th Amendment and was considered cruel and unusual punishment. He was just one vote short of electrocution being declared unconstitutional. His last words were, I'd rather be fishing. In 1980, at the age of 24, Gary Burris shot and killed an Indianapolis taxi driver. He was executed by lethal injection on November 20, 1997. 
His last words were, beam me up, a Star Trek reference. Jeffrey David Matthews was executed in 2011 for the 1994 murder of his great uncle, Otis Earl Short. Matthews's execution had been postponed three times. Former Governor Brad Henry twice granted stays to give defense attorneys time to investigate Matthews's claims of innocence. Right before the lethal injection, Matthews looked at his family members through the glass with a smile and said, I think that governor's phone is broke. He hadn't called yet. Patrick Brian Knight was convicted of a double murder in 1991 and was sentenced to death on June 26, 2007. In the months prior to his execution, he claimed that his last words were going to be a joke. He encouraged fellow inmates to vote on which one he should tell, but he wouldn't tell the guards their choice. Knight claimed that this exercise was to raise the spirits of his fellow inmates. He even had a website called Dead Man Laughing, where the public joined in a controversial contest offering suggestions for the doomed man's last words. It attracted more than 1,300 posts. The winner of this slightly twisted competition, no one apparently, instead of sharing any of the submitted wisecracks, he began crying and listing several names of inmates on death row who he claimed were innocent. Not all of us are innocent, but those are, he said. I said I was going to tell a joke. Death has set me free. That's the biggest joke. I deserve this. Then he added, and the other joke is that I am not Patrick Brian Knight, and y'all can't stop this execution now. Go ahead. I'm finished. Fingerprints proved that he was Patrick Brian Knight.